चैप्टर थ्री मेजर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी मेजर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी आर बेसिकली एवरेज सो द मेजर विच गिव यू आइडिया अबाउट द सेंट्रलाइज वैल्यू ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड मेजर ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी और एवरेज वैल्यू के दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ पर्टिकुलर डेटा इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अराउंड विच ऑल द अदर वैल्यूज आर लोकेटेड सो दैट इज कॉल्ड मेजर ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज एवरेज सो बेसिकली देर देर आर मीन मीडियम एंड मोर दैट यू हैव स्टडी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू हैव टू स्टडी क्वार्टाइल परसेंटाइल एसाइल so basically three types of measures of central tendency mean median mode in mean also there will be simple mean that is arithmetic mean then combined mean weighted mean and harmonic mean harmonic mean is not in your syllabus barabar so average value presents the data in <coughs> concise form means from the average you can have idea about the overall Information or data. If I'm talking, the average marks obtained by a student in 10th standard in particular school is 70. Means on an average, each and every student has scored 70 percentage. So that does not mean that every student has got 70 percent. Some student may have 90 percent, some may have 58 percent. But this is indication of overall performance. That is average. Then it shows special characteristics of data. It helps in comparison between two or more sets of data. Okay, for example, we are talking about India and China. Okay, average income of India and average income of China. Remember? So, from the <coughs> data regarding average income, that is also known as per capita income, per head income. We will ha have idea about which country is superior in terms of income, which country is having more economic development. then characteristics of good measure of central tendency this can be asked in your theory okay what are the characteristics of good measure of central tendency or what features are possessed by an ideal measure of central tendency so it should be well defined and rigid its definition should be proper and its formula should be rigid means it should not be flexible every time answer should be same it must be easy to calculate and understand in its calculation all the observation should be included it should be based on observation of all observation of data it should be suitable for further algebraic operation okay right now we are calculating mean that will be used in some other statistical application like you are going to study in 12 where you are going to use this mean median in some further algebraic and statistical calculation it should be stable measure means too large or too small value of observation should not affect it it means that value of average found for different sample of the same size should be same okay from same population population means the total number of units under study actually a chapter 1 no concept hai okay if i am talking here right now number of students studying in gujarat board is 11 standard say pile so that is called population डायग्नोस what what are our symptoms from what disease we are suffering so it should be stable measure it means that value of average for different sample of the same size from the same population should not be different should be equal it must be representative of population it should not be duly affected by few large or few small observation a certain large observation and certain small observation should not affect its calculation it should be unbiased calculation without any bias it in certain frequency distribution some observation are too large 
if we will omit them or if we will include them, the answer will change. It should not happen when we are talking about ideal or good measure of central tendency. Now, first, arithmetic mean or mean, which is known as X bar. So data may be group or ungroup. Ungroup means only value of x and group means frequency distribution. In group data also there will be two types. Discrete frequency distribution and continuous frequency distribution. Discrete frequency distribution where value of x and f is given. Where x can possess only certain value. It cannot be in decimal. And continuous frequency distribution means distribution with class 0 to 10, 10 to 20. So x can possess any value between this to extreme value upper limit and lower limit. Now for different type of data, there will be different formula to find out mean. Direct method as well as shortcut method. or ungroup or raw data. Arithmetic mean means x bar. It is sigma x upon n. Total of observation upon number of observation. Then in indirect method x bar is equal to a that is assume value plus sigma d upon n where d means x minus a. So from each and every value of x we will subtract certain assume value that is called d or deviation. So x bar is equal to a plus sigma d upon n. For discrete frequency distribution, then x bar is equal to sigma fx upon n. Or small f. f is frequency, x means value of x. So we will multiply it and n means total of frequency that is sigma f. Okay. Then x bar is equal to a plus sigma fd upon n. Again, d is equal to x minus a. So this is 
discrete frequency distribution, direct method and shortcut method. If nothing is specified in sum, you can use any method. And continuous frequency distribution, a distribution having class. So here also x bar is equal to sigma fx upon n. But here x means Mid value, lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 for any class. A plus sigma FD upon N into C. So where class length is same for each and every class. You have to multiply by C. C means class length or class interval. And here D means X minus A upon C. Illustration 2. The rainfall at 10 different places of a district was recorded as 126, 110, 130. Find mean rainfall. So they haven't specified which method is to be used. I am solving this sum by two methods direct as well as indirect. This is ungrouped data because only value of x is given. One twenty six hundred and ten ninety one hundred and fifteen hundred and twelve eighty one zero one ninety three ninety seven and one one three. So for direct method, first of all, we will add all these up. 126 plus 110 plus 91 plus 115 plus 112 plus 80 plus 101 plus 93 plus 97 plus 113. So this is your sigma x. Now formula of x bar sigma x upon n total of all the observations that is 10. Sigma stands for total and number of observation 10. N is 10. So your answer is 10. 10. 10. 3. 3.8. Now we will solve this by shortcut method. Then D. So here I can take any value as A. Any value. It may be in this or may not be in this. Say, I take 110 as A. Means from each and every observation, I will subtract 110. We can take any value. So it will be 16, 126 minus 110. Then 110 minus 110. 91 minus 110. 115 minus 110. 112 minus 110. 80 minus 110. 1, 0, 1. 
then 93 minus 110. Now total 16 minus 19 plus 5 plus 2 minus 30 minus 9 minus 17 minus 13 plus 3. Minus 62. So here x bar is equal to a plus sigma d upon n. This is sigma d, total of d. So here a is 110. 62 divided by 10. So, 110 minus 6.2 plus minus minus. So, answer is 103.8. So, doesn't matter you are using any formula, the answer will be same. This is for raw data or ungrouped data. Now, The mean weight of a group of 20 percent found to be 55 kg. So n is given 20, x bar is 55. Later it was discovered that one of them reported weight 45 which was actually 54. So instead of picking 54, we have taken 45. So we have committed a mistake. So now we have to find out the correct value of the mean. Now, in this type of sum, first of all, you have to find out sigma x. See. What you have been given? X. N 20. Mean x bar. Then wrong value and correct value. So, wrong value is 45 as uh, 45 instead of 54. So I subtract karwani, I add karwani. First of all, we need to find sigma x. X bar is equal to sigma x upon n. So your sigma x is equal to x bar into n. So that is 55 into 20. So it will be 1100. 100. Now, correct sigma x. So 1100 plus 54 minus 45. So it must be 11, 0. Now, your correct mean. So, 11, 0, 9 divided by 20. So, 55.45. Okay. Weight said like kg. Clear? Now. The following table shows number of children per family in a certain area. Find a mean number of children per family. Four, eight, twenty-three, eight, 
6 and 3. Fx, F into x. Sigma fx upon n hundred and seventeen divided by fifty two. So it will be two point twenty. Six check. When values are small, you can always use direct method. But when values are large, shortcut, shortcut method use karwan. So the calculation will be easier. Now see, in illustration six, they have given price that is your x and number of shops that is your f. 206, 212, 218, 220, 24, and 230. Then 5, 8, 9, 14, the n one direct with fx t we have calculator so suppose one indirect method the curve then x minus a uh, i'll take this as a whatever 280 so from each value x book mala check leave it i will subtract 280 so 206 minus 280 minus 12. 212 minus 280 minus 6. 0. 2. 6. 12. And 12. Whatever. Then I don't need sigma fd. I need fd. F into d. Hundred and eighteen minus one point two two one six point seven five. Clear? Ready, mm -hmm. cover? Can I? But generally, the number middle is not selected. If you have now a number, you can see 219 the number, then also the answer is going to be set. That's the magic of max. Answer ultimate is the same. You can see the same. Clear? 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 So, 3.1 mark, 1, 2, and 3 curve. Exercise 3.1.